It's been a long time since I've spent Christmas on the family farm. But this year, I couldn't stop thinking about the night my brother Bobby and I saw the lion and the lamb. <laughs> Hard to believe that was 20 years ago. It was such a magical and wonderful Christmas Eve. But I never really understood what it all meant. Finally, I realized I had to talk to Bobby about it. As soon as I saw the barn, that night came back so clearly to me. When I walked through the door, Mom and Dad looked so happy to see me. Mama decorated the house the way she always did. It's funny, everything looks smaller than it used to. And I couldn't believe how much Bobby's kids had grown. I found Bobby in the kitchen, as usual. I was determined to talk about that night long ago when we were kids. But I didn't know where to begin. Then Bobby had an idea. Hey, let's take a walk to the barn. We'll get some cider for dinner, Emmy. Nobody had called me that in years. I wanted to go to the barn. Maybe we could talk out there. The minute we stepped outside, we both looked up at the clear winter sky. Do you remember the last time we saw a star like that? How could I forget? It was a miracle. You know, I never told anyone about the lion and the lamb. Mm, me neither. Who would have believed us? Are you sure it really happened? I know it did. I remember that I was so excited that Christmas Eve. I wanted to get my chores out of the way first thing. I couldn't believe you and Dad were in the barn so early. That sheep was going to have a lamb, and I wasn't about to miss it. Well, we should have known right then that there was something unusual going on. Who ever heard of a sheep giving birth in the winter? It had been a rough night. I didn't want to leave her. Dad had to practically tear me away for breakfast. Not that morning. Oh, that's right. I've almost forgotten Bobby's solemn vow. I will not ruin my appetite for Mom's Christmas Eve dinner. So while we were stuffing ourselves, you just sat there pretending not to be hungry. Well, I figured that if I didn't eat anything all day, it would make dinner taste even better. But I've got to tell you, it was torture with all that food there on the table. If I had known at breakfast what that day was going to bring, I would have made sure that I put something in my stomach. There were things to do in the barn, even if it was Christmas Eve. When the sheep went into labor, she really had a hard time. I was so glad Dad was there to help out. But I wasn't so glad to see you. You let all the freezing cold air into the barn. I couldn't help it. I had to put out the hay for the cows. It was a difficult delivery. I was getting scared that something would go wrong.
then it happened. Our lamb was absolutely perfect. Even though Dad never got too excited, I could tell he was really happy the lamb was okay. Yeah, well, so was I. I just didn't have any time to enjoy it, because the next thing I knew, I was flying through the air. Could you believe the size of the hole I made in the barn door? I thought for sure Dad was going to get mad, but he just wanted to make sure I was all right. Could you tell that there was something special about that little lamb, Em? From the minute she was born. Yeah, me too. It was so peaceful in the barn that day. We had no idea what was in store for our lamb. that line come from, Bobby? Well, I'm not exactly sure, Em. You know, for years now, I've tried to make sense of it. Well, the Fletcher Brothers Circus always used to come through town on their way to Sarasota. They had all kinds of animals, and monkeys and bears and horses, elephants. They must have had a lion, too. Maybe the lion got away somehow. Of course, back in Mom's kitchen, we had no idea what was going on out in the hills. We were busy making Christmas cookies. Mm, and then Dad came up from the barn. One look at his face, you could tell that something was wrong. The mother sheep had come down with a fever and died. You got real upset. I should have been paying better attention to her. That little lamb should never have lost her mother. Oh, Emmy. Emmy, it wasn't your fault. I mean, you did everything you could. You were so wonderful with that baby lamb. She needed me. I grabbed the old alarm clock and brought the warmest blanket we had out to the barn. The cold air that day seemed to cut right through you. The lamb was so tiny and so helpless. I put the clock next to her so she'd think the ticking was her mother's beating heart. Then I wrapped her up in the blanket. By then, the lion must have been getting closer and closer.
All of a sudden, the cow started making a commotion. I thought it was because Dad was making so much noise fixing the hole in the barn door. Even when he stopped hammering, the cow still wouldn't settle down. I could not figure it out. So Dad and I put them out in the yard. But before I went back to the house, I checked on my lamb one last time. And I thought our barn was the safest place in the world for that little lamb. Mom was making a feast, but all I had on my mind was the lamb. I could barely think about our Christmas Eve dinner at all. Mom found my pan on the stove. I was warming milk for the lamb. I wanted to take it out, but Mom showed me how to test it. And we decided it wasn't ready yet. While I was waiting, I set the table with the good china. Mm, I remember being so hungry, whipping cream for the pies. Dad was getting the firewood ready for the night, and I made sure I placed the dishes just so. Mom had me mixing and stirring things. By that time, the smell of all that food was starting to get to me. <laughs> of course, I had to keep an eye on you to make sure you didn't break your vow. Well, I guess that's what sisters are for. Just before dinner, Dad reminded us to get the cows back in the barn for the night. I was glad I had enough time to feed the lamb. All you could think about was your lamb. As soon as we got into the barn, you went right to her stall to play with her. I wasn't really playing with her. She needed to be fed. But the cows were still restless, so I called you to give me a hand. As I headed out, I heard something, or at least I thought I did, but everything seemed okay. All I remember is not being able to get those cows to budge, and we tried every trick in the book, too. I couldn't figure it out. I, mean, I, I told you there had to be something in the barn that they didn't like. That got me worried about my lamb. Couldn't see anything wrong, and the lamb was just fine. I thought I heard a noise in the hayloft, so I went to check it out. rang the bell for dinner and I went in to get you. I was starving and I knew we couldn't eat until those cows were in their stalls. I still thought there was something up in the loft. Anyway, we finally got one cow into the barn with a bucket of grain and then the others followed. Our table was beautiful. It actually made me think about something besides the lamb for a while. I didn't want to touch anything. <laughs> you were an eating machine that night. Yeah, I was starving. I hadn't eaten a thing all day. Do you remember Dad's little speeches after dinner? Yeah. He'd always tell Mom that she was the most wonderful person in the whole world. And we'd all agree. But little did we know what was going on in the barn. Who could have imagined it?
Even singing Christmas carols had a different meaning that night. I kept thinking of our baby lamb. Well, I had other things on my mind, like opening my presents. And you know, Dad always seemed to know just what I was thinking. Hey, remember my present that year? My pocket watch. I still use it, too. What was your present, Em? Mm. Grandma's cameo brooch. I couldn't wait to wear it. It's been in our family for as long as anyone can remember. After we opened the presents, I could finally go to the barn and check on the lamb. And something told me that I should go with you. When we went out on the porch, there was that star. It was the brightest star I'd ever seen. Wasn't it eerie in the barn? It was totally quiet. The cows didn't make a sound. Well, when we came to the lamb stall, I thought my heart would stop. I have never been that frightened. And then, the lion woke up. But you know, the lion didn't look, look mean or anything. He, he just looked like he was worried about us waking up the lamb. And then it happened. Please allow me to keep my friend warm this evening. We're both by ourselves on this special night, and we need the comfort the other provides. I'll never forget those words as long as I live. It seemed like some kind of music. I remember feeling a deep calm settle over the whole barn and into my bones. And then the lamb spoke. May peace be in everyone's heart. I was speechless. I, I wanted to stay, but I felt like we should leave them alone. So I just wished him a Merry Christmas, and we left. We never saw the lion again. Nope, he just vanished like a dream. It was as if the real spirit of Christmas filled that night. Yeah, and it was so strong that nothing in the world could overcome it. I wish everyone could feel that spirit. Well, everyone can, Em. At Christmas time, we remember that we need one another, just as the lion and the lamb did long ago. Maybe that was the true meaning of that night. We can all find peace in our hearts. Hmm. Let's hope so. Well, hey, you know, according to my Christmas pocket watch here, it's just about time to eat. Some things never change. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, Emmy.